Hello, everyone. Welcome to another week of Introduction to Human Rights. Uh, this week I'll be recapping your posts about women's and children's rights and the relationship between human development and human rights law and introducing uh, next week's topics and also talking a little bit more about the essay and oral presentation assignment that we have coming down the pike. Uh, so first of all, as usual, thanks for your uh, quality and insightful posts last week. Um, there were sort of two prompts. One was looking at particular issues related to women's and children's human rights. Uh, the second portion was talking about the relationship between development work and human rights law. So you spoke about a few different uh, women's and children's human rights issues. Uh, somebody talked about the topic of female genital mutilation, um, maternal mortality rate rates, uh, particular threats that adolescent girls face and restrictions that they face in many parts of the world, uh, and the topic of child marriage. Um, so you all outlined how these issues um, counteract with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as well as more modern human rights instruments, um, such as CEDAW. And um, I think it brings up an interesting uh, topic about, kind of going back to earlier in the semester, we talked about the idea between negative human rights on the one hand versus positive human rights on the other. So as you might recall, a negative right is a right that prohibits a government from doing something to a citizen. So for example, laws against torture, that is a negative right. So it just simply states that a country, a government must not torture its citizen. A positive right, on the other hand, requires the government to do something or provide something to a citizen in order for that right to be met. So, for example, uh, the right to housing, to the extent that people argue that housing is a human right, it's an incumbent upon someone to provide that resource to a person who couldn't obtain it on their own. So in looking at some of these uh, women's and children's issues that you brought up, it's interesting to consider what are negative rights versus positive rights and what are sort of some, some gray areas. So and it's certainly something like female genital mutilation. Um, that is a, a negative right where you're arguing that women should not be subjected uh, to this treatment. Um, other things like maternal mortality, which relate from lack of health care, lack of nutrition, lack of clean water and sanitation primarily, um, that gets more into positive rights, uh, again, where infrastructure needs to be put in place in order to ensure more positive health outcomes for, for women and children. Um, when you get to things like adolescent growth rights or child marriage, to me, that's sort of a gray area. Um, on the one hand, uh, child marriage and many of the restrictions placed on um, adolescent girls, you could say these are negative rights. Um, laws need to be changed to prohibit child marriage, to prevent things like a dowry, to provide more equal opportunity for education for females. So it's strictly a matter of changing laws. Um, however, you have to ask the question of why some of these things exist in a country. Um, certainly there's religious and cultural beliefs um, that perpetuate some of these issues, but there's also economic realities. Um, child marriage, you know, not too many generations removed, was a common practice here in the United States, um, due largely to health care, uh, or sorry, health uh, and economic realities. People lived shorter lifespans. Uh, it was a primarily agriculturally driven society. So patterns of childbearing and economic necessity really dictated what the age of marriage would be. And as those realities change, customs and norms within the United States changed about marriage as well. So simply changing laws in a underdeveloped country uh, probably would not really lead to substantive change on the ground in some of these issues unless there's also development taking place uh, that allow families to take a different approach. Um, so I think that's a good segue to the discussion on the relationship between human development and human rights law. 
So another topic that we talked about with regards to human rights law earlier in this semester was where human rights law reflects what, how the world is versus how the world should be. Um, and some of these negative rights that have been more universally accepted are better reflections of how the world is, but many of the more positive rights um, really are reflections or aspirations of how the world should be. So in this case, and many of you talked about this in your essays, human rights, uh, more modern human rights declarations and conventions and contentions essentially are a goal in human development uh, efforts represent a mean to achieve those goals. So I think you all did a great job of um, talking about the relationship between these two issues. Simply changing a law or passing a treaty at the United Nations um, is not always going to reflect actual changes on the ground, whereas human development work can help to further uh, these goals and bring them closer to reality. So again, excellent work. Um, this week, we'll be continuing to look at some special topics, and our topic for this week will be human trafficking. Um, I'm going to ask you to read certain sections from the United States um, Department of State's Annual Trafficking in Persons Reports, a comprehensive overview of human trafficking throughout the world today, and it also provides snapshots of human trafficking in particular countries uh, throughout the world. So in your next blog, I'll ask you to give sort of an overview of human trafficking today, and then I'll ask you to pick a country of your choice uh, and write about human trafficking in that country. What are the realities? Are there any particular prevalent issues that the country is facing right now? And what are they doing uh, to prevent human trafficking? Or what does the United States State Department say they need to do to better address human trafficking? Um, I also just wanted to talk again about the human rights case study essay uh, and video presentation assignment. So again, that assignment is due March 17th, so you've got a little bit less than a month to complete that assignment. Uh, your task is to find a case study from the Haas textbook. He has several human rights case studies, so you'll pick one of those of interest to you. Uh, you're going to do some additional research uh, into the case, and you'll write an essay about that case in APA format. Um, and then you will also record yourself giving a short video presentation uh, summarizing the points of your essay, post it to YouTube, and embed that on your blog. Um, the assignment has been posted on Canvas, and there's a detailed rubric in there with instructions about the essay. There's also... Um, a sample uh, sort of simulated video presentation that I did the last time I taught this course so that might be a helpful resource for you to view to see what I'm looking for in the video. Um, I also will make an offer to you uh, because this essay counts for a significant portion of your grade uh, and I do have fairly high standards for quality of writing uh, and also APA format and I recognize that many of you may not have previously written assignments in APA or have had much exposure to APA. So with that, uh, I'll make an offer. The assignment is due March 17th. Um, however, if you would like to submit a draft of your essay to me by midnight on March 10th, uh, I will read it, make comments and suggestions, and return them to you by the end of the day on Tuesday, March 12th. And that will give you several days, almost a full week, uh, to make any revisions or edits to your essay, help you out with uh, recording the video uh, before it's due on the 17th. So I strongly encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity because it will you know, really improve your chances of getting a solid grade and putting out a quality product uh, for that assignment. So again, the assignment, uh, both the essay, uh, and the oral presentation are due on March 17th. If you submit to me a draft of your essay by March 10th, I'll read it, respond to you with some comments and suge suggestions by March 12th so that you have that uh, feedback to keep in mind before submitting your final product that will be graded. So with that, I'll sign off. Uh, as always, I look forward to seeing next week's posts, and please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions or concerns about the weekly assignments or the upcoming uh, case study. All the best.